Podcasters. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and we're going to be talking with Allie G or, or Alicia Gilpin. She's the director of engineering at Process and Controls Engineering LLC, and she's also the co-host of a pretty awesome podcast called Automation Ladies. So, Allie G, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Thank you for asking. And, and you know, we always like to get started with, you know, hearing about our, our hero journeys. And I, I'm very excited to hear yours, particularly because I know you had so many, some different trails, some different paths. And, and I'm, I'm, I think this is going to be an exciting conversation. So how did you get to where you're at right now at uh, Process and Controls Engineering? I studied chemical engineering um, and I got a traditional like process engineering job. Um, and I really liked that. And I, you know, for the first three and a half years, um, really just, you know, learned as much as I could. And I had a lot of different managers. Um, but one of them is still my mentor today, um, from that original, you know, first process engineering job that I had. Um, but then there was a, you know, layoff. And so I kind of just kind of looked for work and, um, what I found and it kind of just like caught my eye was a company that was going to, that was, um, hiring for entry level. So I was already four years out. Right. But this was a entry level, uh, it was called industrial automation engineer. Um, and so I was like, Ooh, intrigued. And it was, it was where I was at. I was like, um, you know, I wasn't laid off, but I was basically, you know, going to be laid off next and we weren't doing well. And so mm-hmm. I was just like, I need a job. So I went after this job and I got it. And, um, that's where I, you know, and I knew what that type of work was. I knew what controls was because I managed like as a process engineer, I managed like the controls, like contractors, um, when we did a greenfield build, mm-hmm like in my previous job. So I knew what they did. I just, I was on the other end, you know, they were on the PLC side and I would be on the valve side saying, okay, yeah, you did open it, you know, a hundred percent or 50% or whatever. Um, so I, I knew about like IO checkout. I understood what that is. I just didn't know, you know, the, the details of what they did. And so I finally got my break to like learn that stuff. And, um, you know, I learned it really fast. And even within my first year, I kind of translated like as a, as a process engineer, I lived in spreadsheets. So I just have these gigantic spreadsheets of like every valve, every solenoid, every pump inside of a facility. Right. So it's like every, it's like equipment lists were like normal for me, like a quantities descriptions, just like, so that was a bill of material, but I just needed to kind of tweak the way I looked at it. And then I could create bill of materials for like control panels once I got a few examples, I started seeing like, oh, and I could kind of, you know, ask why, why do we need this? Um, why does this? And I just like grasped it really fast um, to the point where I was able to design uh, my first control panel ever in that first year as a controls engineer. Um, and from then, I, and I did that with Visio. I had no AutoCAD. There was no AutoCAD available. And I did it to scale, oh, wow. like so. I did, I and like I did a bill of material, and then like the the wiring, like the wiring. It was a, a flex IO panel. So uh, I did all that, and you know, I that is when I got addicted completely to build, to designing the actual control panel itself. Um, so I I like right. programming, like the hardware to me, and troubleshooting, and that design end is like so much more like my passion than the programming is. Um, I just, you know, I just want to hire programmers to just go do programming. Um, <laughs> like even though programming does pay more, like I, I don't know. I really love the design side, but anyway, um, that I got into, you know, that, and I quickly like left cause I grew out of it so fast because there were not so many projects and there was too much training And I was like eager to be, you know, I was from already being on projects where we were building real things. And then to be input in all this training, like I kind of got, you know, antsy. And then I got a new job as a basically a field startup engineer 
for controls. So I ran around and like all over the country flew around and started up coffee, um, coffee equipment. So coffee roasters or chaff systems or just industrial systems that are used in roasting coffee. Um, and so I did that for, you okay. know, a couple years and then I went and ran a UL 508A shop because I, I want to design it again. Like I went back to wanting to do design. So I actually like got the shop I was working in. I basically was the one designing the program, designing. I had someone else build for me and then I would um, program it all. So like once it's built, I buy it all. Mm. Like I, I spec it all, make the drawings, like buy all the pieces, like get them all in, give them to my builder. And then have him, you know, build it. And then I check out the entire thing because we actually had the machinery being built there. It was an OEM, a machinery OEM. And so I t- took them through the process of getting them UL certified so that we could put our own UL 508A um, sticker on there. So we got an e-file number and I was the UL gatekeeper. Um, and then I went back to flying around and like starting up coffee systems again. And then I moved to Washington um, and I started doing a lot more estimating. So I was doing like, how do we charge for all of this engineering work? Um, so I got like way more business um, woke. <laughs> and like, uh, at that point, like, um, at that point, uh, I got some kind of like, not like, it, I got encouragement from friends. Um, and I had already started my company, but I was just too scared to do anything about it. So I started it in 2018 Mm -hmm. and I didn't like fully go crazy until July of 2021. And, you know, so I actually have passed my first full year of just like me flying solo. Um, and, uh, and what? Oh yeah. So I guess I, you know, it was hard because like, Kind of like what was the pushing point, right? To like go solo was, um, you know, it was like the end, it was COVID. So, you know, COVID Mm -hmm. just like ruined everything for everybody. And, you know, at the end of it, I just become like, I was like, if I'm going to work this hard, I'm going to do it for myself. (laughs) Um, And so here I am still doing it. And I, it's this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, that's why, like, so I would never, like, if you asked me five years ago if I would do a podcast, the answer is hell no. Um, but after starting my own business, nothing is hard because that is so hard. Everything else is easy. So, mm-hmm. you know, go putting your face on a podcast, which I wouldn't be able to do before um is now just like no big deal it's like well i i've done harder things (laughs) um and and it is like difficult i'm not i i'm actually pretty shy um you won't believe that but i am and um and i and i when i was young i was really shy like i you would never hear me like if i wanted something like i was like oh i guess they don't hear me i guess too bad for me you know i would never speak up ever for myself and now I'm just like, so I guess, you know, like you, there's a breaking point for people and I, I reached mine and I yeah. was just like, I'm so tired of being invisible um, because I have like good things to say um, and I can help. And so I kind of just changed yeah. everything. I changed my demeanor um, and kind of just like just showed people what I, what I am and most take well to it and you know nikki found me nikki is my co-host for automation ladies and you know so we started this podcast it was her idea um but i wanted to do something like that um so when she asked me i was like yes um and so what we do is we interview um women not only women but mostly women um from you know different types of manufacturing jobs or automation type jobs um you know not all automation we also interview like electricians whatever but um uh, so and some of these women just not some they all have such 
like amazing stories about overcoming just crap, like different types of diversity, like, sorry, adversity. Um, and, you know, just, uh-huh. but, but we do have this common like thing where, you know, people are normally at some point in our lives, just telling us that we shouldn't be doing what we're doing. So kind of just like trying to discourage us. And so, and, in, and actually right. like in my family, I've had, you know, female members of my family dis- discouraged to the point of changing majors. Um, and that sucks to me. So, you know, uh, well, and obviously sucks to her. Like, and I feel like there are a lot of women out there that do experience this and like, it's time to watch the rest of us do all this stuff so that they can feel like they can do it and they, and know that they can um be like how can you not look at me (laughs) um so that's that's right that's the hope of like automation ladies is just like you know um i'm not a mom but nikki's a mom and we're just trying to show that's like that's i mean we're so passionate about you know even our friend courtney uh fernandez you know she's a robot mom so she is like raising her children like with a cobot um you know, so the the six year old can like pick up whatever you want with a cobot, and it's like a video game. And like, so we're just like, you know what? Like, engineers, women are very tech, can be very technical, um, just by nature. And you know, it it looks funny to other to certain people because they're not used to seeing it. But like, it was never. I feel like in the past it wasn't nurtured. Um, so if a if a woman yeah. were to show that, yeah. like. Um, you know, maybe she got lucky and like people were supportive around her, but for the most part, it wasn't super nurtured and now we're nurturing it. So you're seeing all kinds of women that you don't expect in every role ever. Um, right. And, and, you know, we have a special place in our heart for manufacturing and automation. So we decided that, I mean, that's our passion, but it's also, you know, about women too. It's not just about um right yeah and it's about kind of advocating like to men about their daughters like we kind of highlight like awesome dads that like do teach their daughters amazing stuff um like jordan day and elena day um i highly recommend like find like following them she has a youtube channel little miss fix it um and and what um so yeah that's 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 my story is you know i i started a company and you know it's it's super hard um and and i do plan to continue to do this until i don't know until i maybe start a family but i don't know maybe not i don't know i don't know well Well, you can figure, I mean, you'll figure it out as you go, I'm sure. I mean, and, and so far as the, the advocates for women, we, we've had two series on Eco Ask Why. One of them was women in engineering. One of them was women in industry. They each were 10 interviews each, so about 20 plus episodes of just a, a strictly women focus. And we did that primarily because I'm a three time girl dad. And, you know, I have young ladies running around my house and I'm trying to, to, to show them you know, the, the different paths that do exist, you know, if they choose to go a path like that. And plus, it's just we need more of it. If you go to any of the industry trade shows, as you as you as I know you do, uh, they're heavily male dominated. You know, there, there's a there's a, a heavy male presence and we need more females there because there's just so much value that we can learn from our ladies, particularly when in manufacturing and industry and engineering. Uh, so, you know, we're right there with you. I think what you and Nikki are doing is great. We're definitely supporting that. Uh, I actually, uh, before you guys started, she and I met and I gave her some, some, just some insider things that I've learned over the years of podcasting that hopefully maybe help you guys get going. I'm curious from automation lady standpoint, what's been the funnest part of that show for you? Oh, meeting these women. Oh my God. Like having them actually talk their, like, you know, tell their story is worth it. We, we, we are getting like, in some cases, I I think lifelong friends out of some of these, you know, interviews. Um, so how do you beat that? Yeah. Um, and that, and that helps with the listening. Cause yeah. I think they can tell that we are really like interested in these people's stories, like when we're interviewing them and, um, th- yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's almost 
like free therapy. Right, right. I'm curious. How do you find the time? I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of commitment to make content like that. And your and your LinkedIn page is killing it. You, you know, you're crushing it with content every day. How do you find the time to create the content that you do in such an engaging way? I'm kind of just like because I I'm stream of consciousness when I create the the content. If I had to plan right. content, which I know that a lot of people do. Um, they're just like, okay, I'm going to put out this kind of content this week. Like I cannot afford to do that. So I have like a totally sporadic, you know, if I go to a show, like, you know, I'll have more activity, but like, I kind of just have this like steady growth where people are like, what is she doing? And no one can figure out the end game because there isn't one. (laughs) Um, and like, I just, (laughs) <laughs> you know, when, as I come up with something, like I'll be on a bus, right. And I will have just had this like moment and like, it's on my phone. So I can just write what I just like had this moment about. And like, sometimes I just like have these moments and random times. So if you look at like the times I post things, it's completely crazy, but that's just because that's the way that I create this content is like, it just comes out of me. And then I move on and like, and I may not even look again at like the responses for a while. Um, because you know, I, because I, like you're saying, I have like stuff that I'm always doing. Um, I'm, I'm either planning to go somewhere or yeah. answering a phone call because some, something is broken somewhere or, you know, someone can't come do something. I don't know. There's always something. And, you know, people are asking for help in different ways. Right. So I, it's just, uh, it, it's reactionary. Um, and it's, it's difficult, um, to manage it all, but that's why I did say this is the hardest thing I've ever done (laughs) is trying to have a business and, you know, promote myself. But I was already like embedded promoting myself in my work anyway. So it wasn't that hard to just continue to just like, it's the business part that's killing me. The, um, the, the me creating content is just, it's natural. So Well, I mean, I see so many of these these influencers out there and they have such a big emphasis on just growing their followers. I just want to grow my followers. I want to get to 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, whatever it is, versus actually serving with an unselfish motive. It seems like you're pretty unselfish about this. I mean, what is your what is what is your take on social media? I mean, are you do you have a follower goal or are you just trying to put stuff out there that helps people? So originally, you know, I, I still I always want even in when I get, you know, as I get more followers. Um, but what I realized, you know, what changed, I guess is, yeah, in the beginning it was just like creating like these YouTube videos that would help you learn the stuff that I wish like was out when I was in college. Cause I was like, this is really good. Like 3d Mm -hmm. animation of something I did not understand in college. Um, so I, you know, got, that was like how I kind of got to my first 10,000 people. Um, and after 10,000 people, it snowballs, but with, when you have more followers, you can, you actually can help more people. Um, and so, you Mm -hmm. know, I think that's part of why people even follow me because if, if I'm just selling something, why would they be interested? They wouldn't be. Um, and so I, we really, I'm, I'm at this point, like with the amount of followers I have, I can make a bigger impact on like. Uh, visibility of the trade. So I actually like right. want more numbers because I can reach more people and more people can be like, Oh yeah, I know about that one girl, um, you know, Ali G. And then, you know, I want LinkedIn to turn into like little girls, like seeing this stuff. Um, and I can't do that if I have a thousand followers. I mean, you can do that, but it, it does help if you have more. So at this point, like I do care about like my end game is to have, you know, more. Um, but at the same time I have plenty. So I'm actually very grateful for the following I do have because I can, you know, I can, wh- one of the things that I'm proud of is I just did this the other day, um, is someone asked okay. for some help. A, a technician just messaged specifically me, like a technician in California. And then I posted about it asking for that help. And I got people from all kinds of countries responding. Um, Italy, Spain, um, Finland, um, just all these countries, India, 
um, just responding, helping me help this other person. And so it's just like, that's a, that's a really powerful, like thing to have a network that is global that like, we have all these same problems, um, with our controllers and like somebody out there in my network has seen because my network is so huge. Like, I'm not trying to brag. Like it's, it's to me amazing. Cause it was an accident anyway, like getting it that big. So it's amazing what it can do now. It's its own thing. Um, and yeah, it can be taken away. I have actually been kicked off of LinkedIn before. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to have a, th- this connection with like people from every country. Well, you can't you can't leave, leave something like that out there and not give us more on that allergy. So what'd you get kicked out of LinkedIn for? Come on now. <laughs> so so someone. Oh, I was a female welder, like put a weld and this guy who just like specifically like trolls, just welders. Cause he, he runs like a welding, like right. consulting firm and it's not even in the U S so, so anyway, this guy like rips into her, but saying like really nasty, like just things. And he was allowed to say it cause he wasn't like bullying. But he was just like, I would never hire you. Like, uh-huh. you're never going to make it as a coded welder. Just like stuff like that. And it's just like, okay, that's just like really disheartening stuff. So I wrote, uh, shame on you, I think. Like, yeah, shame on you. Yeah. That, that's really what I wrote. And that is like me bullying. So I got kicked off. Um, and then I had to petition oh. to get oh, back no. on. And he, he got nothing for being like that. Like, cause it's not, he didn't call her names. He just said he would never hire her and that she'll never make it in her life as her, as her goal of a welder. It's like, dude, you are such a beep. But anyway, um, so I lost my cool, and, but I learned from that because I can't just lose my cool whenever I you know want to, cause that's not a thing that I can do anymore when I'm this many followers in. So I can, I have more to lose. Right. When I do stupid things like go after some troll, internet troll, like how many internet trolls are there? A billion, you know, like whatever. <laughs> can't can't get them all. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, there's so much more downside than upside, you know, going that path. I mean, I think, but you know, at some point though, you know, I applaud you for taking a stand. So I mean, how long did did you were you kicked off before they let you back on the platform? Uh, I, I think five days. And I guess that's my my only concern with any of these social platforms is that you live and die by their rules. Right. I mean, so you do have to somewhat play within the confines of, of how they, what they see fit. So, I mean, uh, yeah. So, I mean, there, there, there's risk there for sure. Well, Ali, we, Ali G, we always like to touch a little bit about you outside of work on these hero episodes. So what's, what's something you like to do for fun? You got any hobbies? Um, so I love, uh, so building up my electronics lab, but outside of like electronics, because I have a huge lab here, a mechatronics lab, um, I love hiking. Um, and so I moved out here. There's like ferns and waterfalls and amazing scenery up in, I'm in like the Pacific Northwest, specifically around Seattle okay. area. So, you know, I have three gorgeous national parks, like within, you know, not too far. Um, so I, yeah. I love to go out and be in the ferns, in the waterfalls, like in out there hiking. That's really cool. That's awesome. Now we also love to hear about family at Eco S Y. Is anything about your, your, your loved ones, family that you like to share with us here? Yeah. My mom, she lives with me. Um, I love her. She is uh, my everything. So, and, uh, shout out to my mom. <laughs> That's awesome. So. Any podcast or, or, or other resources, obviously automation ladies, but just things that you enjoy consuming for fun that you think others would, would find value in. Um, so, you know, I like watching TW controls and like Tim, Tim Wilborn's uh, channel because it's a family yeah. channel. And that just like is my that's, that's my favorite thing about it. Like it, at first it was like I thought it was just Tim and not, no offense to just Tim, but like him having like the whole family as like part of this thing just made it, just took it to like the way next level um, to have this like controls family, yeah. um, you know, doing, doing really the controls life. Like it's just, it's really cool. Um, so, and they have so many videos to do really yep. uh, 
useful st- things for Rockwell stuff. So if you're trying to do compact logics, control logics, right. or guard logics, you're trying to do any power flex, you're trying to do stuff with like Alan Bradley products, like they got some free videos. Um, and, and if you want to buy some trainers yeah. from them, for your maintenance departments, that's also a smart idea. They're, they're great. I mean, we've had the whole family on Eco SY. I've had Tim, <laughs> I've had Amber, I've had their son, Michael, like Michael's been on before as well. Uh, we even had Mary Bruce, you know, she works out there with them. So, yeah. uh, we, we, we definitely love the, the, our, our friends over there at TW Controls. So, uh, our last thing we do, uh, Allie G is a lightning round for our heroes, uh, conversation. So if you're willing to jump in, we'll, we'll, we'll fire off a few quick, quick fire questions and, and love to, to, to learn a little bit more about you as we go. So you good with that? All right. So what's your, what's your favorite food? Ooh, uh, Mexican food. All right. Adult beverage. Uh, white wine, either like Pinot Grigio or, or Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Favorite movie of all time. I'm going to be so cliche and say Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> okay. Okay. What, what, what's your, uh, what kind of music do you enjoy? Oh, I love um, rap, current rap, but specifically female rap. Okay. Favorite rapper? Ooh, Cardi B. Okay. All right. What, what, uh, let's see. Let's go with your all time favorite TV show. Lost. <laughs> Okay. All right. And last question, Allergy, for the lightning round. Dogs or cats? Oh, cats. Oh, oh, you are so close. So close on that one. That's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll let you slide. <laughs> well, Allergy, this has been great. We call it Eco Ask Why. We always wrap up with the why. So if somebody wants to come up to you and say, Hey, Allergy, what is your personal why? What are you gonna tell them? Because I can? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, this is this has been a lot of a lot of fun getting working with you again. Where once you shout out where you want people to connect with you at, and and we'll, and we'll, that way they can hear. It. Well, obviously we'll sync all that up in our show notes. But where should people go to learn more about you and what you're doing? Uh, my LinkedIn page is very active, as I kind of mentioned earlier. So if you want to see what I'm thinking throughout the day. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, go on to my LinkedIn page, Alicia Gilpin. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll, we'll have all that stuff uh, synced up in the show notes. So Allie G, anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today on Eco Ask Why? No. Um, please follow Automation Ladies and listen to our podcast. There you go. Absolutely. We'll make sure we have that link in the show notes as well for Automation Ladies. We definitely support you and, and, and everything you, got, you all are doing. Uh, over there on that show. So thank you so much for your time today, Allie G. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, that was a fun conversation with Allie G. Just hearing her story, her passion, just how she just made that leap. And then all the things she's done from a podcast standpoint, as well as her LinkedIn focus to help just not just be uh, an influencer, but actually help people. So I loved how she has that servant heart. She's trying to connect ideas and people together and just serve at the highest level. So definitely encourage you to check out Automation Ladies. Check out the uh, uh, her, her show. Go go connect with her on LinkedIn. She, she gave a shout out to our friends at TW Control. So if you haven't connected with them yet, definitely do that as well. At Tim and Amber, everything, every, everybody over at TW Controls, everything that they do, we support. We're behind them. Uh, definitely feel there's so much value there. But Allie G, again, what a story. What a story. So highly encourage you to check her out. Be a, be a, become a follower. You won't go wrong there. If you're enjoying Eco Ask Why, we'd encourage you to give us a rating and write a review. That really goes a long way. Maybe share this conversation with someone else because that really helps too, particularly the, the ladies out there that may be listening or that you think would be interested in coming into industry. Conversations like this matter. So share that with them. Well, thank you for, for joining us today on Eco Ask Why. Come back next week as we have some more great topics to dig into. And remember to keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. 
WHY.com.